Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Borderwise, and welcome to this basic tank tutorial for From the Depths. And the emphasis is really on basic uh, for this guide, uh, because as much as I would like to tell everybody how to make the perfect tank in From the Depths, I can't tell you things I don't know. It took me ages to even get to this point uh, to talk about tanks with any length of confidence, so bear with me. Um, so yeah, this guide is basically just how to get started uh, with building tanks in From the Depths. Nothing fancy, nothing amazing, just making something small and functional to at the very least get you started uh, with a land campaign like Ashes of the Empire. And I will be flip-flopping back and forth between talking about keeping things within the 2500 uh, volume limit of Ashes and not bothering with it all because, thankfully, uh, we are blessed with the option to roll with that or not. So to start off with, we've got this example tank right here, and I'm just going to go over some general themes uh, for your tank. And the first one, which is probably the most important one, is spaced armor. So, if you look inside this tank, you'll notice that it is compartmentalized somewhat, and that there are air gaps as much as possible all the way through it, not counting where these surge protectors are, because I stupidly made this entire thing out of metal. But yeah, so there's air gaps in the sides, and around the back, and around, and on the front as well. Uh, at the very least with this, uh, alloy, with this metal pole here, which is better than nothing, it's very cramped in there. And there's also spaced armor in the turret, so... You'll notice that it has wedges in here, rather than solid blocks. That's so, if a heat or hair shell uh, strikes the front here, it doesn't just channel all the way through and blow up the APS components in here. I'm going to talk a little bit more later as to why this is a deck gun and why it's not sunken into the hull. But yeah, so spaced armor is probably one of the most important things you need to do for your tank because at this scale, and particularly in uh, the land campaign in uh, regular From the Depths, Ashes of the Empire, heat and hash is your worst nightmare. It is very, very strong at this scale, because um, because the volume limit is so tight, and this particular one is like less than half of the max volume limit of Ashes, it's only about 800 cubic meters. Um, heat and hash and chem those chemical armor pierces, they really do a number on you, so spaced armor whenever humanly possible, even if you have to kind of uh, do crazy things like use poles or slopes or wedges. Um, as much as possible. And the other thing uh, that's also really important, and this is a kind of... Tanks in From the Depths are a little bit... Uh, the design philosophy is kind of half uh, going by real-life rules and half not. Uh, it's not fully consistent, but uh, one of the good uh, things to do is to keep the profile as low as possible. This whole uh, tank is just five meters tall, so... and it's like... Uh, its length is about 20 meters, and its width is about 11 meters. So, the reason why you want to keep this low is, um, well, same reason why um, real-life tanks have a low profile. It's so, um, the shots are more likely to whiff over them, and the higher your profile, uh, the greater the chance that you'll get hit right in the turret. And that's the last place you want to get hit, because once the big gun gets blown off, well, there's no point to the tank anymore, is there? And, uh, on a similar note to protection, your thickest armor uh, on your tank uh, goes on uh, the part which is facing the enemy. So in this case, this is a broadsiding tank, it goes broadside right, so if I spawn in a little tiny sand viper and have this fella just, fl just drive around shooting at it, it's facing its right side to enemy, so that is where the armor goes. And this guy isn't particularly well armored. Uh, it's got about just one meter of metal all around, except on the sides, where it has two. Okay, so... Also, the power should be small and dense. This guy actually, uh... Possibly uses a little bit too much power for uh, what it's got. But it's just got a teeny tiny uh, little... Uh, electric steam engine in here, and that is enough. So, I used to use RTGs all the time uh, for tanks like these. Uh, don't do that, because uh, uh, RTGs have lousy power density. So um, you want to stick to either injector fuel engines or just very tiny, compact uh, little steam engines instead. And yeah, this is a... Uh, I always love shooting at the Sand Viper because it falls to pieces so easily. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. So, 
Uh, also, rubber. So, it is an inevitable thing uh, with the land campaign is that you get bits of rough terrain like this on the map. And uh, you don't always have uh, good control. Up and fly with fleet. Listening. Form up and fly with fleet. Listening. Moving out. Uh, you are a land thing, by the way, probably. So, sending this little tank off into rough terrain. Um, and while we do that, let's talk about the rubber. So, rubber on the front and a little bit on the undersides uh, is a very good idea. Uh, simply because you will run into bumpy terrain sooner rather than later. And it is a mistake to think that your wheels will just uh, do uh, the whole job with it. That is, uh, they probably won't. Because terrain is bumpy and it will scrape your bottom. Okay, and on a similar note, talking about uh, wheels and track. So, um, there's two basic ways to get your trank, uh, trank, get your tank to drive around. And that's uh, whether it's a real tank or more of an armored car. So in this particular case, well, we've got tracks. So, pretty much always I just go add all tracks because that's nice and simple. And, um, yeah, so that automatically adds tracks to everything. Let's see if we actually handle uh, harsh terrain here. But, yeah, and wheel configuration. I tend to keep things simple. I just uh, put maximum spring force because it means the thing doesn't sink into the ground too much. And then you just kind of have to fiddle with these a little bit depending on what exactly you're wanting to do. And uh, how is our pathfinding going? It's going okay by the looks of it. So, yeah. There's, uh, what else is important here? So, max spring force. Max spring length. It determines how far away the wheel is from its axle. And if you're wanting to do clever things like hide your wheels inside uh, your hull, which is entirely possible, by the way, uh, this is one of the things you would mess with. Uh, don't know what that means, don't know what that means. Forward friction, probably best not to mess with that, otherwise it'll mess with um, how your wheels actually work. Side friction is something you should only mess with if your tank has trouble turning. And show suspension is just... Do we show the suspension or not? So, let's just see. I'm not sure if you can see right there. Right there, that thing flicking in and out of existence is the suspension. Axle length, extending the length of, of the wheel away from the vehicle. So this is the opposite to spring length. It's just getting it away from them. Again, handy if you want to hide um, your uh, wheels inside your hull. And the solid length extension is basically just permanent bit of string, uh, string, spring extension, like so. And yeah, so really, like, honestly, uh, you don't need to worry about this too much, except for max spring force and spring length, that's all I usually pay attention to. We're keeping it basic. And what else can we talk about? We should probably talk about shells as well, so just for the sake of... Uh, like I say, like, um, basic tank guide, don't go mad with your first tank, but this is a shell that for some reason works really well in the, at the very least, the opening stages of Ashes of the Empire. And this is a 125mm, uh, squash flak. Like, I don't fully understand myself, but, um, Hesh flak seems to work really well. Uh, particularly against the Dustwind Gypsies, but also later on against other things, simply because... Uh, these two warheads complement each other quite well. Uh, the squash head, particularly if you do bother to back it up with HE warheads, uh, shreds anything that's got decent armor. And the flak warhead just blows off anything that's more delicate. So, in particular, this gets rid of ERA, which would otherwise hard counter the squash heads. So yeah, that's quite handy. Also, also, I should mention up here, is that um, uh, previously in From the Depths, um, I really did wonder what the point of these uh, 1 meter by 1 meter Omni and Elevation Mantlets are for. With tanks, these are very useful indeed because it means you can keep uh, your whole turret nice and uh, shallow. Not shallow, short. Not short. Um, basically, you can keep the height of them down to keep that nice low profile. And this deck gun is just nice and self-contained and it's all beautiful. So, and there's one last thing to note when building a tank, and you'll notice that uh, this thing doesn't actually have any heavy armor on. So, handy count block mod, you'll notice that... Let's go here, type in heavy. It's got absolutely no heavy armor uh, blocks on it at all. Most of these are modded, uh, by the way. Probably should have turned the mods off, but yeah, absolutely no 
uh, heavy armor blocks. It has got heavy barrels, I think. Heavy. Nope, it's got no heavy barrels either. Cheap tank. It's also, uh, can we just appreciate how well this thing is handling terrain? And on a similar note, it is, um, it might mash its barrel on the ground as well. So, similar thing to ships as well. You want to keep the center of mass low, uh, so the tank doesn't flip. Also, it's generally a good idea to do some, something that uh, I have not done here, which is make sure the barrel doesn't poke out in front. And we've just found out where this tank has its limit. Uh, let's, uh... Well, we're stuck. <laughs> well, in any case, there is one last thing to quickly mention uh, with tanks, and one of them is that since tanks, um, unlike ships, you don't have to worry about buoyancy, you don't have to worry about it sinking, you might be tempted uh, to go completely mad uh, with the heavy armor. So this is a similar tank to what I just made, and I do like the look of it, I have to admit. And similar design, but just on a larger scale. So we've got the ammo in the back, we've got the AI, uh, got, uh, again, uh, electric steam powering the whole thing. Got, even got some a repair bot and two repair tentacles up here. Uh, huge flat uh, deck gun, uh, which I'm reasonably proud of, actually, because deck guns are actually really hard to keep uh, nice and compact. And sloped armor up the wazoo. So, and uh, you see there's lots of... Uh, there's lots of heavy armor poles in there, and this should be a very tough thing. Except, I don't like this thing. Why? Because it underperforms for its cost. And the reason it costs so much is because it is made almost entirely out of heavy armor. So, heavy armor. So, where is the most of it? So, yeah, heavy armor beam. Yeah, so just looking at the beams as well, it's just, it's made out of heavy armor, therefore it is very expensive. And it's still just one gun. So this is a classic uh, rookie from the Death's Mistake, is don't go mad with the heavy armor. Not to say uh, that you can't use heavy armor on tanks. Um, it's just like with ships, if you want to armor your AI compartment and your ammo compartment, stuff like that, heavy armor is very good. But just don't go mad with it, because that's the mistake I have here. Uh, this thing, uh, by chance mostly, lost a fight with a King Cobra, which, to be fair, is the same cost as it. But, um, this thing, this thing should not do that. The, like, something that is this heavily armored should be able to just tank everything, and it can't. Because the volume limit is too restrictive. Where did we go? Yes. So we're already losing blocks because we lost some armor, and whoopsie daisy. Also, heavy armor, as it turns out, it does have an impact on uh, the movement of this thing. So, weight doesn't really make much of a difference uh, for how fast a thing moves, but it does affect its momentum, and for a tank, it does affect its turning. So, while we're shooting up this King Cobra, and we're actually getting kind of lucky, that's what did it. One of those missiles just snuck up under here and took out the turret. Alright, so looking here, looking at the wheel configuration, the side friction is set to a very low number. Reason being, this damn thing, you'll notice it's Tokyo drifting like a champ right now. Um, the mass of this thing is so great uh, that it can't really turn on the spot just with its tracks. Which is a problem, because um, I tend to find that a lighter, cheaper tank that's far more maneuverable is overall better than a heavier tank that's really slow. And for those of you in the audience who are tank nerds, you'll be like, well, yeah, that mimics real life, doesn't it? It's better to have a tank that's fast and versatile and affordable than it is uh, to have something that is, you know, big and slow and useless. So, sometimes I need to get reminded of things like this. So, yeah. For the record, uh, I have made tanks out of metal that can... Uh, solo the King Cobra for, well, about half the cost of this tank, so heavy armor is, uh, it's, well, the same guideline for tanks as it is for ships, actually, is that if you want to keep things cost efficient, and basically, remember, you're putting one gun into play at a time, and there are diminishing returns to defending that gun. We have blown up a King Cobra, well done us. So, yeah, it's just, unless you 
like basically it helps to combat test your tanks and wherever they get hit the most that's where you stick heavy armor and it's also a good idea to if you are going to bother with doing that do cover the wheels i have not done that right here uh, wheels do have a lot of health uh, but um, when they get hit with things like large missiles, like what the King Cobra has, um, that health doesn't actually count for much. So, also weaponry uh, with tanks. Uh, APS is generally the way to go, and you don't have to use deck guns uh, with tanks. It's just uh, be aware that you need to plan things out ahead of time a little bit better if you're going to sink them down into the hull. And I do have excess space. Um, uh, in this hull, I could definitely get away uh, with making a sunken turret if I shuffled things around a little bit. I do like the deck gun uh, tanks, however, because I think it looks cool, so I'm shamelessly biased right there. But you can... Uh, I used to think that you can't use uh, cram cannons with tanks at all, and for the most part, you can't. Um, but then I made this thing. So this thing is absolutely hilarious because it's got a ridiculously fat turret. And it's got rams on it. Why? Because it drives really close to things and then shoots them in the face. And um, it's got a giant as uh, cram cannon. Crams don't do well when uh, they're flat, unlike uh, APS. But uh, this thing does do a lot of damage when it hits something, which is very, very nice. Please don't die horribly. Okay, never mind. Well, at least we can still ram and have a good time. Did I mention I stuck jets on this thing? Ramming vehicles are actually probably the best tanks you will ever find because, well, this thing isn't even a particularly good example of a ramming tank. And look what it's doing. It's still winning. And it just dodged missiles. But anyway, so that's uh, the exhibition of the tanks, so to speak. Also, active defense is probably a good... See, we won that. When in doubt, stick rams on your tanks. That can definitely work. This is not so basic a tutorial anymore, is it? Also, that's one of those friggin' large missiles that did that. That's the first time I've seen it hit the turret. I hate large missiles. In Ashes of the Empire. So, let's build a tank from scratch. Let's, wa let's walk ourselves through this, shall we? So, first things first, I always like to design the turret first, because that's handy. Uh, turret test fortress, land turret test fortress, and so uh, for this fella, it always, as it tends to be the case if you're designing APS, let's design the shell first. In this particular case, we're not going to do anything fancy, we're just going to do uh, same shell we were doing before. We're going to stick flak and HE squash. Hash is very good uh, when fighting tanks, unlike real life. And what do we want to do? Let's go... Yeah, let's go 125 millimeters. And we're going to have our turret right here. And apologies to everyone who wants me to do a sunken turret. You're probably screaming at me to do that right now. But, you know, bear with me. Because I like how low slung they are. So let's do that. And let's do... How big do we want to make this? Two. One. And let's add two more on the sides. So you basically want to make a square if you're going to do a flat deck gun. Because if you make it too long and skinny, it's not very good. So advanced cannons. I'd like to do this. Sink it back. Elevation mantlet. And thankfully, APS Tetris is easier than it has ever been in the whole world because of how this works. So let's stick... And yeah, let's go. Nope. 125 millimeters. Go there. And one, two. Then we can have a whole bunch of autoloaders back here. Now, depending on what you're trying to do, uh, this is one of the few times when making APS uh, that you can, you know, get away with using autoloaders only. And we could use belt feds right here. Except we've got a problem in that uh, we don't have optimum space to use belt feds right here. Or we could. Or we could. Let's try that. Let's not try that. Because we're not going to get enough. So we're going to keep this really brainless. And we're just going to do that. 
And let's do this. There we go. If we do this now. Let's see how we're doing. Perfect. And I'm going to refrain from using clips in this thing because clips are very explodey. And this is the cheap, nasty way of having a not incredibly explosive turret. Okay then, what are we looking at? We need more coolers. We can do that. We can do that just fine. Uh, yes, alright. Now some recoil. And you'll notice the way I'm doing this is that I'm sticking recoil absorbers on the front because they're the least important thing uh, to worry about. We got a little bit of spares there, but that's okay. Doing this on the fly. And autoloaders in the back, coolers in between, firing piece at the front. Now, for the slopage, uh, I tend to do this. We've got wedges in the middle, just to act as nice spaced armor on the front. Volume free spaced armor, I should say. We've got some wedges right here, delicious wedges. And we're going to actually use more uh, slopes on top. Reason being, that's a good idea. I'm going to use three meter slopes back there, just so it's nice and consistent. And I've learned the hard way to just put extra slopes uh, just here on the sides, just to make absolutely sure that uh, there's no gaps left there. And slopes like this, and slopes like this. There we go. This looks weird, but bear with me, it's only going to get better. Here, and then just a few more slopes, like so. Actually, we could get away with no uh, spaced armor on top, because this is a very, very low slung thing. There we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. We are cooking with biscuits now. We are cooking with delicious biscuits. There's that. And here's that that, here's that, and here's this, here's this, here's this, here's this, and actually I'm going to extend this a little bit because I do want a little bit, teeny tiny bit of spaced armor on the rear, because that's a very good idea. Did I remember to? Yes, I did. There we go, and... Go and is that a slope? Yes, it is. Actually, we're going to replace these just with little wedges, just in case. Just in case. And yes, and one big beam right there. You do lose a fair amount of armor stacking by doing this, but it is totally worth it. Trust me. Alrighty, so we've got our butt back here. Place that once again, just remembering this as I go. Yeah, that reminds me. Should probably flip this guy. One's right on the end to get flipped sideways, just because um, that means that air gap in there is a little bit more distinct. I swear that helps. There we go there, and then we somehow have to figure out how to make this somewhat pretty, because apparently that's my priorities these days, is to make things pretty. There we go. And just for giggles... Okay, so we're getting our tank turret right here. I'm not going to go insane, I'm just going to have 2, 3, how's our accuracy? It is perfect. And one of the problems you have is that if you're trying to make a tank that looks slightly good, and I don't know if this counts as basic, is you're going to, as it, is that at lower gauges, you're going to have very skinny barrels like this, and that's going to make you sad. Thankfully, decorations are a thing, and thankfully, thankfully, I have a decoration already. So, APS components, take a right there, two, three, four, two, three, four, and barrel end. Boop, 
and whoop, and there we go. Looks a little bit less bad. Okay, so there's our there is our gun. It's not got a great rate of fire, but it's quite small. But as far as deck guns go, it's pretty alright. Let's actually change that to what it actually is supposed to be. And let's see, how does it do against uh, our friend the Sand Viper? Not great at the moment, because the Sand Viper fishtails around like crazy. There we go, there we go. Now we're getting some shots in. It would be nice if you could hit the thing, come on. Today, please. There we go, there we go, there we go. And almost. A few more. Just gotta pop that turret. Come on. Come on, we're designing tanks here, we've got places to be. AI in from the depth still can't hit anything worth a damn. There we go. Lucky shot. Alright. So, now that we have a functional turret that can do the bare minimum of what we want, let's make a hull. And let us remember what this is. Go there, perfect, perfect. You go away. New vehicle time. And are we all facing the right way? No, we're not. We want to be facing the correct way. One, two, three. Then you just gotta make a hull, a deck hull. I don't often build things from the top down, but for tanks, it just feels right. Here, we're gonna go like so. Just have a little bit of that, and depending on what you want to stick in the internals, if you want bare necessities, um, you can just leave one gap in there, because spaced armor on top is less important. There are not many things in ashes that fire a hash at you from above, and if they are, well, that's what you get for not uh, having air superiority. Jet plane fighter tutorial coming later. That's actually not what I want to do. There we go here. And just for giggles, actually, I'm going to change my mind frequently. And I'm going to stick the wheels on the inside. There we go. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Okay, so basic shape, we've got a basic tank thing. Also, there is something I've heard about uh, tank designing, uh, talking about uh, the optimum length to width ratio. I was not, I was unfortunately was not able to find anything concrete on that. But roughly speaking, um, basically twice as long as it's wide is about as much a ratio as you can get away with. And yeah. That's basically it. In in absence of anything else, go with that. Uh, there's probably a better ratio than that, but I don't know what it is. Okay, keeping in mind we're on the front here, we're gonna need some rubber for safety. For safety. And some metal on top, also for safety. Yes, you have no idea how hard I'm having to suppress my instincts to make a canoe right now. No idea. I did it for you. That's all metal. This should be rubber instead. Actually, no. So let's keep that metal. And just have rubber on it like... So, let's have a bumper on this. There we go, now we know which end is the front, and now we can stick things on the back. Like so, like so, like so, like so. Perfect, perfect. 
How's our volume going? Absolutely fine. This is within acceptable Ash's limits. If you care about such things, which I have to confess, usually I don't, because I hate the volume limit in Ashes. It's kind of asinine, and there's no reason for it to be there. And also, a lot of faction vehicles break it. And that's why we get the option to turn it off, which is fan dabby dozy. So now, what we're going to do is something slightly more advanced, and that is just um, to have the wheel well double as spaced armor. So that's super cool. Let's see, which side do we want the wheel on? We do want that. Let's uh, let's see what your actual thing is. Actual length? Nope, that's not what I want. That's not what I wanted. There we go. Perfect. So now, what we can do is what I like to do, is I like to flip these. These front wheels like that. And the back wheels like so. Now, let us spring length, three, like spring force, copy to all wheels. Let us remember to do that, and to do that, and to do this, and to do this, and to do this. Incidentally, should mention as well the armored car method you can just not bother with tracks at all and just stick turning uh, wheels on the front we are trying to build a tank right now so oh ah uh, yes you also got to be careful what ah oh, darn it you also got if you do wheels like this just to give it extra clearance you've got to be careful about which what order you do it in that's probably what has been going wrong for me in the past. Okay, and now automatic tracks. Add all tracks. Look at that, we have a tank. You're quite a neat looking tank, as a matter of fact. And not very tall. Alrighty then, so we've got our tank, kind of, but we've got all this space in here to do stuff with. So now, let us add in the things we need. We need an ammo compartment, probably not that too big of a one. So, let's go... Here, here, and here, and also here. One, two, three. Probably could afford to put extra countermeasures on here. And then... So even a little bit of spaced armor is better than none, and we are well within the volume limit right now, and that's good. And I'm sticking the ammo in the back, because generally the rear of a craft is the part that's hardest to hit. And... yes. Actually, wait a minute. And perfect, we've actually got more ammo than we need. So, we could make that a bit smaller, I'm not going to bother right now. So next is the AI compartment, and I'm going to be slightly smarter than I usually am about things like this, and make it out of stone. So, scoot forward a little bit. There we go, there we go, there we go. Mainframe here. To here. And having uh, lengthy bits of spaced armor is also quite helpful because it helps to spread out the fragments, stops them all concentrating on one spot. Okay, what else are we doing? What else are we doing? We're going here. Usual AI stuff. Usual AI stuff. Target prioritization, endpoint selection, clusters of blocks, because that's a smart idea, and value to range. And we're gonna have some GPP, PPP, PPP. Actually, no, we're gonna have a wireless transmitter first. And then we're gonna have some GPP, PPP. Okay, so almost done here. We just need some power. Thankfully, I have a prefab steam engine 
all available for this because I'm trying to get into the habit of using steam engines. You don't have to, like I said. A uh, tiny injector engine will do the trick just fine. Hello, hello. Let's do that. Nice and enclosed. Could do a little bit more efficient there, but I'm not going to for the moment. Now we do need an electric engine. That is important. I'm going to have... How much volume do we have? We have plenty. So now I'm going to uh, have two redundant electric engines, which will also function as... Um, actually, I can just stick it back here. have 540 power. Okay, that's basically it for a basic tank, but we need detection. So, I used to just stick uh, detection just on the turret. I have since learned that that just makes the turret really big and bulky. and also means that if it gets hit in the turret a lot, you lose both the weapon and the detection, and that's no good. Hopefully... Okay, let's see here. Flip me. We turn all the way around. Yes, we can. Helps to. It actually kind of helps to have your turret have a little bit of clearance over, well, everything. So let's go here. And let's. See. We're just going to have some trackers here, there, and everywhere. And I'm probably going to stick a radar dish uh, just on top of the turret because I can get away with that. There we go. We're going to have that, and we're going to have that this and for detection I usually just uh, make a mixture of stuff I did not mean to do that so radar over here radar over there camera over here they are blocking each other but as they get shot off they will get uh, progressively more better at it what am I doing what am I doing let's uh let's replace these trackers instead. There we go. Because that's worked for me in the past. Cameras. This usually does the trick. If you want to... Uh, if you're shooting at... Like, if you make an anti-aircraft tank, especially if it's got lasers or something on it, uh, you might, will probably be better off um, using uh, IR trackers uh, rather than what I'm doing right now. I'm just hoping like hell this doesn't get shot off. So we've got a very basic tank. Now for the cockpit. You've got to be careful with the cockpit to not make a hole right over where you were before. So, right here we've got steam engine. So we're going to do uh, this stuff. We're going to have uh, some wedges in here. Delicious wedges. Chair and super flat, so no one uh, can uh, deny us. I don't know what that sentence was. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So we've got weapons, check, detection, check, AI, check. All right. Now the trick is, we need to know if this thing's got enough power, and for that we need to drive it around. So, we're going to do that. We do have enough power. And we've got power steering. We can Tokyo Drift like a champion. Excellent. We've in fact got so much power that we have trouble slowing down. So let's save this as... Let's, uh, let's go... Where should we go? Let's go Tutorial Craft. Sample Tank 2. 
And what's our final cost here? 15,000. It's uh, pretty cheap, actually. So let's give it some behavior so it knows what to do with its life. And 1,500. Angle to maintain. Maneuver. Uh, we're going to go ship or tank because that's what it's for. Adjustments. We want it to be on land. And don't want reverse. Full terrain. Uh, prediction. And also, we're going to go here and we're going to make sure this thing knows that it's a land vehicle. This is also quite a fast tank. Hell yeah. That deserves a screenshot, because that is pretty. Okay, so let's give this thing a spin. Let's, uh... Two Sand Vipers. Where you go, lass. And the detection has just got to get its act together. Almost looks like a Merkava, actually, just uh, the way it moves. Well, no, the way the, ta the way the turret is set back, that tends to be a thing I do. And we have just destroyed one a Sand Viper already. Now we've got another one. So, the Sand Viper is uh, quite a cheap, nasty vehicle, but there we go. We've got a basic tank uh, to... Um, We've got a basic tank formula that we can run around and blow stuff up and just be a tank with. So, that's basically it uh, for this tutorial. Uh, like I said at the beginning, um, I was fo trying to focus on the basics in this tutorial, but there is a point in where basic stuff blends in with advanced stuff um, for From the Depths, and particularly with building any kind of specialized vehicle. So, yeah. Hopefully this has been helpful. Hopefully, if it wasn't helpful, it was entertaining, and if it wasn't either of those things, well, I hope you have a lovely day anyway, and I hope you uh, build a tank and are happy with it. So, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps, and there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters, and I will see you next time in From the Depths. Farewell.